Hi, my name is Julie, I'm an engineer at Microsoft and welcome to another video where I thought I would just record myself working really quickly to explain a concept and just throw it online because it's been a while since I've published something. Uh, but of course it didn't go as easily as I thought. Um, so the video basically has like four chapters or four things. Uh, so I'm working on a GitHub Actions pipeline so you can kind of see that a little bit. Um, and it is deploying to a Azure Kubernetes cluster. Um, the cool part is that I'm using a feature called federated identity. So there's like no secrets whatsoever. And that's the part that's broken. Um, so we're gonna fix that in the portal. I'm going to first conceptually explain it with like a whiteboard, um, very kind of raw iPads uh, sketch. Uh, and then it does work towards the end of it, uh, but I can't deploy because I am a stickler for security best practices uh, following principle of least privilege. So I have for every namespace and environment a different um, credential, in this case, a client ID for a headless account. Anyhow, um, it's a relatively short video. I think if it's super interesting, if you guys wanna know more about the concepts, let me know in the uh, comments below and I'll try to make a proper video that's more teaching as opposed to me doing voiceover uh, over me working. So looking at this application and this failed run, um, I couldn't even do the Azure login. And if you look at the error message, it's kind of funny, it says, no matching federated identity record. Now, what I wanna show you today is that I'm trying to deploy without a password at all, and that is using a feature called federated identity. So I'm gonna whiteboard conceptually how this kind of works with the um, tokens. So I have a OpenID Connect provider. I'm gonna call this GH for GitHub. So when my uh, job runs, right, we have a build agent. I'm just gonna call this CI. What it's gonna do is go to GitHub, right? And it comes back with a um, ID token. Now, what this build agent will then do is it goes to the Azure Active Directory with its uh, ID token. And it's going to exchange that for a access token. Now the access token is part of the uh, OAuth uh, concept. Now with this access token, it is going to talk to the Azure Resource Manager API or the ARM API. So I'm gonna draw these little things and basically say it's an API. And it's gonna take that access token. And in the case of this pipeline, it's talking to um, my Kubernetes cluster. So it's a little bit more complicated because it's talking to a Kubernetes API, which is tied to Azure Active Directory, but I will sketch that out in a uh, different video when I go through the entire pipeline. The important thing to understand is um, basically this piece here when it's swapping everything. The magic of all of this is that this access token will expire. And um, so they vary in terms of expiration. So the access tokens for people, when you log into the um, Azure portal or Azure DevOps, uh, by default, I think it's one hour. Uh, it's probably far, far shorter for a CI build because it should not you know, run for one hour. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how it works in a nutshell. Um, so if we go and look at the pipeline itself, uh, this is the continuous delivery pipeline. I'm gonna make it just a little bit bigger, close that menu. Um, and you can see that uh, for the permissions of this pipeline, I allow it to get a um, ID token from the GitHub OpenID Connect uh, provider. So this is in the main pipeline. Um, I call something called deploy. Let's see, that's debugging, that's the Docker. And here we have something called deploy. And you look at the secrets that I pass it and I'm only passing a client ID, a subscription ID and a tenant ID. At no point is there any sort of secret because I don't need it. Now, um, this job failed because I'm doing some weird, crazy refactoring, which you should not do in this repo. I'm running two applications <laughs> from one repository and I forgot to reconfigure it after I kind of like move things around. 
So uh, let's do that right now. Um, and going into the Azure portal, you'll see that I am looking at the service principle. Yeah, let's not do that. Um, let's close that. Yes. So here we go. Here is the service principle um, that uh, this repository is trying to use. Uh, the dev branch, anyway, should correspond to the dev service principle, which is a headless account. Um, you can see that it has no certificates, it has no secrets, and it has no federated credentials. And that's why it's failing, right? So we're going to add one right now. And you'll see that I don't need any sort of password whatsoever. So I'm going to select GitHub Actions. Um, it's going to say the organization name, which is actually just my GitHub username. Uh, the name of the repository is really long because I renamed it from something else. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Come over here. Um, and entity type is really weird, um, but you have to tie it to something. Uh, for me, I'm tying it to something called a GitHub environment, which is a logical and security boundary. I'll show you in a second what that looks like. Um, and I need to also specify that name. So if we come back into this repository, let's go to settings and you will see, actually it's much more interesting. Let's look at secrets, right? So that was kind of traditional before we had environments and you'll see that we have environment secrets and we have repository secrets. So these repository secrets are available to basically all the pipelines, regardless of whether it's tied to a branch or not. What's really cool about having environments is, and you'll see that I have a dev environment, I have a staging environment. I also have the old application, which I also gave it its own uh, dev environment and staging environment. And you'll see that they are all just the client IDs. Uh, now, basically the one for dev is missing. I added the, um, which you won't be able to see, I added the secret itself, right? Um, so the client ID value, and I, you know, tied it to a very specific branch Only the main branch can use the, uh, dev environment. Uh, but I forgot to add it here. <laughs> so the client ID basically doesn't do me any good cause it doesn't exist here yet. So my environment, uh, is called dev. So I have four of them, but the one that I want for this cloud architecture review application is called dev. So let's come back here and put dev and I need to give it a name. Okay. I'm terrible at giving up names. Um, let's just call this that, uh, dev, probably not a good name. Uh, I'll probably have to change it at some point. Let's just add it. Cause I want to finish recording the video. It does not have a description, which I should probably add at some point. Oh, well, uh, so now it has federated credentials. Let's come back to GitHub actions and let's try to actually just rerun that rerun failed jobs. So let's try that again. And so now when it tries to log into Azure, both to, um, apply the manifest to the Kubernetes cluster, as well as actually log into the Azure container registry to store that image. It should now work, please. Uh, which one should I check first? Actually, usually this one, um, will go first. We'll finish first. It's late. Like I was really just playing with all the camera equipment to finally set up and figure out and write down what are the settings that I need. Um, and it's actually quite late at 10 PM. Um, but I was like, it's looking pretty and I have this error message. So let's just record this really quickly. Um, I'll have to properly explain it later. So I was able to log in. I couldn't apply something, but let's look at the login and see if that all that works out. <laughs> so it managed to log in. Um, there were no resources in this namespace that it could find, but it was able to successfully log into the cluster. So that tells me there's other configuration that I need to figure out. Um, probably some RBAC missing. Yes, definitely some RBAC missing. And it's still tied to, <laughs> I didn't update the manifest. That's why it's not working. So all of the manifest YAML still refer to the old application. 
Okay, I wanted to explain one thing really quickly is that when you look at this error message, you'll see that it has a very specific assertion subject. Um, there are standards in terms of how you define all of this, but you'll see that it's my repository, so the owner, the name of the repository, and again, I'm tying it to the environment called dev. If we go back and look at the Azure portal, let's ignore the fact that entity is such a generic term that it's useless. Um, if you look at subject identifier, you can see here that matches exactly what GitHub is issuing. And that's what um, Azure is checking for, Azure AD. So it's like, okay, is it really you? And you know, Julie configured it if we're gonna let this guy through. Okay, one more thing I wanna explain, uh, even though this is not a good place to do it properly, is why I still have an error message. Um, so the important thing to understand is that this repository um, is actually, it has two applications. Um, so here's my Git repo. And I had an application that was called AKS Architect. Uh, and that's how it originally started. And I'm pivoting the proof of concept to something that I can build much more quickly and that I can build myself. And it's called an architecture review. Now, the AKS Architect, that exists, but the architecture review does not yet in the Kubernetes cluster. And everything is namespace. So if I look at my, let's just say this is the dev cluster, I also have various namespaces. And right now the, um, let's just call this AKS and let's just call this review to refer to the two different things. Um, inside the AKS namespace, there is stuff in there. The review one is empty, right? And that's because the Kubernetes uh, manifest YAML files, it still refers to the old namespace. Now, um, for each branch and environment that I have, I have a very specific headless account. And so the AKS architect one, uh, let's see, let's bring back up my pencil. There we go, tap on that one. So the AKS architect one, there is RBAC tied to it and what I was trying to do, which is why it's giving me the error, is I was taking the architecture review, right, which was tied to the main branch, um, trying to access the AKS architect namespace, and uh, basically it was, nope, you are not allowed to do that. And so previously AKS architect now has its own special branch, and why that's why I worked before. Um, in a different video, I'll explain why I'm doing this nonsense, <laughs> which I do not recommend you do. Uh, I can keep track of the stuff of what's going on in my head, uh, but especially if you're a beginner, ignore that. I'm just explaining to you why I have this error. Um, and I have this error as well because I really do follow principle of least privilege. So security best practices, but of course it also means I trip over myself uh, regularly. But it's good, it's good. So I can't accidentally uh, destroy the cluster too much. Um, yeah, so that's hopefully the very last addendum to this video that was supposed to be really, really short.